We will now cover the 20 most relevant packages for your road to machine learning mastery. And in case I missed your favorite, be sure to add to the knowledge of others and let them know in the comments down below. OpenCV, the open source computer vision library, is your best friend when it comes to images and videos. It offers great, efficient solutions to common problems such as face detection or edge detection. Edge detection basically is a process of detecting various lines inside an image as we can see here. If you're planning to work with images in data science, this library really is a must. OpenCV gathered a massive 65,000 stars on GitHub and made working with images several x faster and easier. Matplotlib. Data visualization is your main way to communicate with non-data wizards. If you think about it, even apps are merely a way to visualize various data interactions behind the scene. From visualizing your edge detection algorithm or looking at distributions in your data, Matplotlib is your partner in crime. 14,000 stars on GitHub and surely a nice library to start working with. I mean, for example, this animated line plop using Seaborn and Matplotlib in a video that should be linked somewhere around here. Pip. Given that we are talking about Python packages, we have to take a moment to talk about their master Pip. Without it, you can't install any of the others after all. It's only purpose is to install Python packages from the Python package index or places such as GitHub, but you can also use it to install your own custom build stuff. 7000 stars just don't really reflect how important it is for NumPy. Python wouldn't be the most popular programming language without NumPy. It is the foundation of all data science and machine learning packages and essential package for all math intensive computations with Python. All that nasty linear algebra and fancy math you learned in university is basically handled by NumPy in a very efficient way. Its syntax style can be seen in many of the important data libraries. 18,000 stars on GitHub give you a glimpse into how crucial of a basis for the Python ecosystem it is. Pandas. Built mostly on NumPy is the heart of all data science you can ever do with Python. Import pandas as PD is the first line of code I type in the morning and it is much more than Excel on steroids. Its declared goal is to become the most popular open source data tool available in any language. And I think they are more than halfway there. While it's often is not the fastest tool, there are many sub-tools to speed it up, such as Dask, Swifter, Koalas, and others that build on their syntax, and ease of use to make it also useful for bigger data projects. 30,000 stars on GitHub, truly the starting point for any aspiring data wizard. Python Date Util. If you ever worked with dates in Python, you know doing it without Date Util is a pain. It can compute, given the current date, the next month for the distance between dates and seconds. And most importantly, it handles these nasty time zone issues for you, which if you ever try doing it without a library can be a massive pain. Scikit-learn. If machine learning is your passion, the Scikit-learn project got you covered the best place to get started and also the first place to look for any algorithm that you could possibly want to use for your predictions. It also features tons of handy evaluation methods and training helpers such as grid search. If you're looking for a first introduction to one of its core models, make sure to check out my video on decision trees. 47,000 stars on GitHub tell you why Python is the machine learner's language of choice. SciPy. I know this is kind of confusing, but there is a SciPy library and there is a SciPy stack. Most of the libraries and packages I talked about so far are part of the SciPy stack, including pretty much NumPy, Matplotlib, IPython and Pandas. Just like NumPy, you most probably won't use it itself often, but it's included in many of the other libraries such as scikit-learn. SciPy provides the core mathematical methods to do the complex machine learning processes. Again, somewhat strange that it only has 8,500 stars on GitHub, but a TQDM. If you ever wondered what my favorite Python package is, look no further. It's this stupid little application called TQDM. All it really does is give you a processing bar that you can throw around any for loop and it gives you a progressing bar that tells you how long each iteration takes on average and most importantly how long it will take such that you know exactly for how long you can watch YouTube videos like mine before you have to go back to work. 19,000 stars for my favorite package which gave me more peace of mind in the last year than any other package. TensorFlow, the most popular deep learning framework and really what made Python what it is today. TensorFlow is an entire end-to-end -end open source machine learning platform that includes many more packages and tools, chosen by many of the world leading companies for their deep learning needs. TensorFlow is with a staggering 
150,000 stars on GitHub, the most popular Python package of all time. If you want to know more about this one and the other best machine learning tools, make sure to check out my video that will pop up somewhere here, here, I don't know. Keras, a deep learning framework made for humans, as their slogan goes, it made rapidly developing neural networks a thing. And I remember before Keras, it was quite the effort to write a simple sequential model even. It is based on top of TensorFlow and really the way developers start when they first try around with a new architecture for their model. It reduces the entry barrier for starting to program neural networks by so much that most high school students could do it by now. Keras is another hugely popular Python package at around 50,000 stars. PyTorch. TensorFlow's main competitor in the deep learning space. It has become a great alternative and my personal favorite for developing neural networks. I think its community is a bit stronger in the realm of natural language processing, while TensorFlow tends to be a bit more on the image and video side. As with Keras, it has its own simplifying library, PyTorch Lightning, which I made an entire tutorial about. So make sure to check that one out if you want to get started with deep learning. 50,000 stars on GitHub may seem like a little compared to TensorFlow, but when looked at over time, it's truly catching up faster and faster. Stats models. Stats model, in contrast to the fancy new machine learning world, is your door to the classical world of statistics. It contains many helpful statistical evaluations and tests. In contrast, these tend to be a lot more stable and surely something any data scientist should use every now and then. 6000 stars, probably more feedback on the coolness of deep learning versus classical statistics. Plotly, the big alternative to Matplotlib is Plotly. A objectively more beautiful and far better for interactive data visualizations. The main difference to Matplotlib is that it is browser-based and slightly harder to start with. But once you understand the basics, it is truly an amazing tool. Its strong integration with Jupyter makes me believe that it will become more and more standard and make people move away from Matplotlib integrations. I, for example, made this stunning visualization of the probability of you liking this video, given the amount of time you watched using Plotly. 10,000 stars on GitHub and slowly catching up with Matplotlib. NLTK, short for the Natural Language Toolkit, is your best friend when you are trying to make sense of any text. It contains extensive algorithms for various grammatical transformations, such as stemming and incredible lists of symbols that you might want to remove before processing text in your models, such as dots and, you know, stopping words. It will also detect what is most likely a sentence and what is not to correct grammatical errors made by the writers of your dataset. All in all, give it a shot if you're working with text again, 10,000 stars, which is crazy for a niche package like this one. Scrappy. If you ever tried doing data science without data, I assume you realize that it's rather pointless. Luckily, the internet contains information about almost everything. But sometimes it's not stored in a niche CSV-like format and you first have to go out into the wild and gather it. This is exactly where Scrappy can help you by making it easy to crawl websites around the globe using a few lines of code. Next time you have an idea where no one pre-gathered the datasets for you, be sure to check out this 41,000 stars project. Beautiful soup. A very similar use case. Often these damn web developers store their data in an inferior data structure called HTML. To make use of that nested craziness, beautiful soup has been created. It helps you extract various aspects of the HTML, such as titles and tags, and lets you iterate them like normal dictionaries. It helped me in several little projects where I was interested in user comments on websites that do not offer an open API. XG Boost. Once your dataset size crosses a certain terabyte threshold, it can be hard to use the common vanilla implementations of machine learning algorithms often offered. XGBoost is there to rescue from waiting weeks for the computations to end. It is a highly scalable and distributed gradient boosting library that will make sure your calculations run as efficiently as possible. Available in almost all common data science languages and stacks. PySpark. Data engineering is part of every data scientist's workflow and if you ever try to process billions of data points, you know that your conventional for loop will only get you this far. PySpark is the Python implementation of the very popular Apache Spark data processing engine. It is like Pandas but built with distributed computing in mind from the very beginning. If you ever get the feeling that you can't process your data fast enough to keep track, this surely is exactly what you need. 30,000 stars on GitHub makes it one of the most popular data processing tools out there. Or libfree. 
Orlap 3 is a powerful, user-friendly HTTP client for Python. If you are trying to do anything with the internet in Python, this or something that builds on it is a must. API crawlers and connections to various external data sources included. 3000 stars on GitHub, don't lie. It was a pleasure to look at these amazing packages with you. Let us know exactly what your favorite package is below in the comments so others can benefit from your knowledge too. If you haven't subscribed yet, by the way, be sure to hit the image of me coming up right now.